We, um, we basically hijacked Mike Hookham, all right? Mike was on his way down to Penzance and Newlyn to do the fisheries when Richard Ford said, well, hold on a second, we've got fisheries here. But no, yeah, the glass eels, the Wire Valley smokeries. So Mike kindly agreed to take an extra day out of his schedule, pop in and see us. So we've had him working all day. He's been on Radio Gloucester. Mike's previously been our defence spokesman. He's, um, he's known for sleeping with veterans. I'll rephrase that, no, actually. No, I'll actually rephrase that. Mike went out and slept with them on the streets to find out what the hell is going on, why they're being treated like this. Um, he's now our national fisheries spokesman and uh, deputy leader, is it called? Deputy leader. Deputy sins. leader for his sins. And basically, the party is back, and the party's back in the black. He loves oh. some of you, you know? What we've got, present company accepted, is a meritocracy. And I said this before, Gerard has come on, he appointed Tony McIntyre as, as national chairman. And it's a brilliant appointment on many counts because, like I said to many of you before, he wouldn't have worked with Tony. He would have known of him, but not really known him. It's an appointment, not nepotism, not what has gone on in this party before. Your mate's getting a decent job. No, it's true skills, followed by S Sebastian Fairweather, who is just doing an astonishing job as treasurer. He really is. And we have now got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds in the kitty. And a lot of that is down to people here from branches from Hereford, there's branches from Stroud, all over, who've suddenly realised the trust is back in UKIP. They know if they send, yeah. If they send that money into the centre, it will not be put up the wall, okay? It's gonna be used and it's gonna be used wisely. And the other thing, the membership is now really bouncing back due to our recruitment pinup girl, Theresa May, <laughs> who is just doing a great job for us. Now listen, we're gonna do, Mike's gonna do a brief talk to you. We're then gonna do Q and A. Now, what I'm gonna say to you is, I'm not lovely, nice and fluffy and cuddly like Richard Ford. It is, the clue is in the name, it is questions, and it is answers, not long rambling statements. I'll chop them off at the knees, okay? Questions, answers, because Mike is a Yorkshireman, you will get answers, but you can always tell a Yorkshireman, just not very much, so don't bother. <laughs> All right? Mike? <laughs> Thank you very much, Ernie. I'm severely underwhelmed by that introduction. <laughs> yeah, uh, this has been dropped on me, so I've got no prepared speech, whatever. So what I'm going to do, is I'll tell you from the heart, uh, I'll do a little bit of a spiel. And then what I always say to these sort of things is, uh, you ask me a question, I will give you the answer, and I will give you honestly. And that may be brutally honest for some people, but it will be honest. So... Yeah, uh, I've had a fantastic day today. We've been down at the, what do they call this place? Wye Valley. Wye Valley. And smokery, yeah. And smokery, very nice food. First time ever I've eaten eel. I come from Hull, which is a fishing city, and I've never eaten eel before. But uh, yeah, eel, smoked eel, very, very nice today. Uh, learned hell of a lot about uh, glass eels, uh, about the seven, about the fishing there and the, uh, and the catching of these glass eels. and. Uh, Peter, who I'm meeting later on, he was there with today, he, he taught me a level lot of stuff there, uh, that he's not allowed to export outside of the European Union, which I find absolutely incredible, where he could, uh, yeah, where he could, uh, he could export to Russia, he could export to China, but apparently the regulations are he cannot export outside of the European Union. So that's something I'm going to take up. I promised him that we will be putting questions in to George Eustace, or George Useless as he's known, uh, Michael Gove, uh, David Davis, and to Theresa the Appeaser, uh, and also putting questions into the Parliament. So, yeah, very, very good day. 
Uh, I'm very glad that you've asked me to, to pop in. Uh, I'm always pleased to come in and speak to the membership. That's probably one of the best parts of, of my job, other than sitting in and arguing with the French, Dutch, German, Spanish fishermen. Uh, to, well, they're representatives, really, but uh, it's always good to meet the membership and, and to put you know, faces out there and say, you know, well done to all of you people. Because this is what we believe in, Gerard and myself, is that this party is a party of membership. It's, it's from the ground upwards and it's, we wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be here as an MEP because nobody voted in Yorkshire for Mike Hookham. They voted for UKIP. That's who they voted for and that's why I'm here as an MEP. It's the membership that went out and, and campaigned. We put it out in Yorkshire at the time in 2014, a quarter of a million leaflets around the area. Quarter of a million. That one didn't go through the post, that was people going out and putting them leaflets through doors. That was a hell of an effort. Quarter of a million leaflets. So it's the membership that we appreciate, I appreciate, and I thank from the bottom of my heart, really, for going out there and giving that effort. Uh, Gerard has done a fantastic job. He's raised now just short of 300,000 pounds. We really, when we took this on, there is a bit of a backfade, yeah, I can hear. I don't know whether it's me. All right, well, I'll stand back here then. Out the way. <laughs> yeah, we, when, we, when we took over, when Gerard said, yeah, he would step forward as the as interim leader, uh, we really found out just how close his party was to, to falling. We was on our knees. We, we, you know, we always said it was last chance alone. Well, this was last chance alone. We was desperate. We was desperate. Gerard put that appeal out for money, uh, and it's been a fantastic, fantastic effort from the membership, from the branches, you know, to raise that amount of money in, sh in such a short time. Gerard's only been in office, I think, five weeks now. Uh, absolutely fantastic effort. So I thank all of you people for actually going out there <laughs> and sending that money in and keeping, keeping the party afloat because time and time again, our adversaries, the Labour Party especially, wanted us finished, wanted us out the way. And also the, the mainstream media, you know, BBC, time and time again you went onto the BBC and said, well, you're you finished, you're bankrupt, you know, you, you, you're on your way out. Well, no, we're not. We're now in the black. We're now going to go into an election in, in May. We're going to put candidates up for that. We're going to fight another election there. And we're back on the field again. We're back there as the only credible party, the credible political party that's fighting for the working man and woman of this country. No other party's doing that. Don't let anybody kid you. Labour Party is certainly not. You know, the, if anybody, I mean, my father, my grandfather would be spinning in the grave if they actually looked and saw what the Labour Party is at the moment. Anti-Semitic. Uh, my father would be absolutely killing himself now if he, built, you know, if he saw what the Labour Party had become. And this is a party that, are, you know, back in the 1900s when it was formed was a party that was from the, the unions and from the working class and, and the, the people that... Foreign Secretary, Ernie well yeah but they fought like hell to get to get that party up and running and it, it was it was a party for the working man well that's gone now they are not speaking for the working man and woman of this country anymore they've gone it's i believe it's this party ukip that speak on behalf of the british working man and woman yeah. Now, in the Fisheries Committee, the Pesh Committee that I sit in, uh, I'm the only voice there that's actually fighting against the European Union that votes down time and time again uh, legislation that's coming through. There's, you see it on the board, it comes up for abstain against, against one, this one, all every time, every time. Always against. I put two amendments forward that would take the, the common fisheries policy out of the Great Repeal Bill, which means that the day we leave the European Union, we would be out, we'd have our 200 mile economic zone back, we'd have out British fishermen fishing our waters, landing our fish in British ports and processing them in British factories. There was only one party that voted against that, the Labour Party. The whole lot on block voted against it. Tories abstained, uh, Lib Dems abstained and the Greens abstained. But the Labour Party voted against it. And there was a party that said, we are the party for the fishermen. Absolutely disgusting. 
disgusting. Uh, so we are there, we're fighting on, we're, we, you know, we're back on the field again and we need you people out there to be knocking on doors and leafleting and taking us through. And I think with Gerard as the, the leader, I think a lot of people have seen that he is a decent man, a genuine man, and I've known him for, for many, many years now. He's, he's, a, he's an awkward bugger, is Gerard. He's a queer sod, really, because what he tells you, he believes in, and he doesn't change his mind. If he says black's black, that's it. You will not change his mind. And he's, he's an odd politician when he tells you the truth. There's not many politicians <laughs> do that. But he is a sound, he is a sound man, you know, and I, I believe we've got a leader there that is going to take us through to the next general election, which is, I think, is 2020. What we need to do is make sure that he stays in, in position now, right through, through past Brexit in March 2019, because, again, there is nobody better to speak on Brexit than Gerard. He's, he's been in there for quite a few years now. He knows it backwards. He can speak authoritatively on it. And he's the best man in the party that we've got at the moment to speak on Brexit. We need him in place and we need him to carry on. And we need the, you know, the membership to support him in that. Because, quite honestly, we can't afford £30,000 for another leadership election. And do we want one? I don't think so. I don't think there's any appetite for one. So let's keep Gerard in there. Keep him battling on. And uh, I see he's been in trouble today on some BBC programme where the, the, the guy... Was, yeah. So as long as he's upsetting people, he's doing something right, isn't he? You know.